Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby uh, here at home uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments on a daily basis with the master. Thank you so much for being with me this week. I'm excited about this week's series. Uh, we're entitling this week's series, The Secret of a Champion. The Secret of a Champion. God is not called us to be chumps. God has called us to be champions. And in your own way, you can be a champion. Uh, Booker T. Washington once said that success should never be measured by what a person achieves in life, but instead on the basis of what a person had to overcome to get there. I know some people that we might not celebrate as champions, but I do. I know some people who've had so many disadvantages, but yet they've been able to overcome those disadvantages and succeed in spite of them. That's the champion mindset. It's interesting that the word champion is found in the Bible and it's in reference to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is called in the Bible, the champion. And we're called to follow Jesus's example and become champions in our own lives. Let's look at the scriptures, Hebrews chapter 12, verses one, two, and three. And when we get to one verse, you'll see where it refers to Jesus as a champion. It says, Hebrews 12 and one, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion. Hey, man, now this is the New Living Translation. And the New Living Translation refers to Jesus as the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him he endured. Don't forget that word endured because that's one of the signs of a champion. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Amen. Verse three, think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people, then you won't become weary and give up. You know, you can tell just by reading these verses that uh, the writer of Hebrews, we don't know who the writer of Hebrews is, but we do know this, that the writer of Hebrews is borrowing sp a sports analogy. Um, and the reason he's using sports analogies is because in the first century world, the world of Jesus, the world of Paul, the world of the apostles, sports was very popular. I mean, this was a, the first century of Jesus world was a sports craved, sports enthusiastic world. Now I know that we have our sports outlets like ESPN and I know there's sports radio, but let me tell you something. The only reason they didn't have ESPN back in the day of Jesus was because they didn't have the technology. Uh, sports was very important. In fact, um, when you think of Colosseums, the Colosseums that they built, they had a Colosseum called Circus Maximus. And Circus Maximus was a Colosseum that was Maximus. It was a maximum Colosseum that, listen to this, seated 180,000 spectators. They were a sports craved society. And because of the, the uh, high appreciation for sports in that first century, uh, the Bible writers often use sports analogies to communicate what the life of the Christian faith is all about. It's many scriptures that we read, we don't, we don't always hear the sports reference in the scripture, but it's a, they're sports analogies. For example, take for example, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Listen to this sports analogy Paul uses. He says, don't you realize that in a race, a race, sports analogy, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Winning is part of sports, running. Look at, listen to this analogy. All athletes are disciplined. Disciple, discipline, 
disciple, discipline, all come from the same root. And a disciple is someone who's disciplined in their training. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. Now, now look at the rope of dope. Look at boxing. He even uses a boxing analogy. I am not just shadow boxing. Verse 27, I discipline my body. That's what athletes do, like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear after preaching to others, I myself uh, might be disqualified. So, so Paul is using sports metaphors and sports analogies to help uh, the Corinthian Christians understand the life of faith. Here's another sports analogy, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. Uh, it says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. So you're going to be a weightlifter. Be strong. That's, that's power lifting. Be strong in the Lord and in the power, power lifting of his might. Uh, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And let's listen to this. For we wrestle. What is wrestling? Wrestling is a sports analogy. He's using sports. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. And then, of course, uh, when we look at Hebrews chapter 12 and we look at verse 2, we are told that not only that even Jesus Christ uh, uh, the metaphor is that Jesus Christ is an athlete, but not just an athlete. Jesus is the champion and the same disciplines that Jesus needed to win are the same disciplines that uh, champions in sports use to win. And what this writer is saying is that God wants us to be like Jesus and to be a champion. And this week, our focus will be on how can I become a champion in life, in any area of life? How can I win? When you were born again, you were born to win. Let me say that again. We ought to put that on a t-shirt somewhere. When I was born again, I was born to win. All these analogies about sports, you keep reading the word win. God wants you to win. God wants you to win. God wants you to be a champion. And being a champion is not about being better than the next person from the Christian perspective, but it's being the best version of yourself, fulfilling the purpose God has for your life. Now, very quickly, here are some characteristics of a champion, seven characteristics. I want you to write them down and I want you to ask yourself, is my life in, in alignment with these seven characteristics of a champion? Characteristic number one champions dream tramp champions dream right now we're in the midst of the nba finals our, our nba championship we haven't got to the finals yet but each one of the teams that are in the nba uh, uh, uh champions they are dreaming of being the preeminent uh team in the nba and listen champions dream When's the last time you had a dream of a better self, of your better self? Not just what you're doing now, not just that which is easy, but that which you've always wanted to do, but you just have not had the champion mentality. Dream big, no dream too extreme with God. Secondly, here's a second characteristic of a champion. Champions are fired up. Champions get excited. You can't be a champion if you don't get fired up, get pumped up and say, I'm going to do this. Uh, for example, you might want to be a champion when it comes to losing weight. I don't know. I'm just using this against an analogy where you have to, first of all, dream of, okay, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. And then you got to get fired up. You got to get fired up. You got to get your passion back. Champions dream. Champions get fired up. Three, champions bounce back. You will have some setbacks, but a Failure is not when you fall down. Failure is when you refuse to stay, to, to get back up. Champions bounce back. Three, um, four, excuse me, put this down. And I'm, I'm going to keep all of these on the screen and just let you look at them again. Champions dream. Champions are fired up. Champions bounce back. Champions aim high. Look, 
If you're gonna beat, if you're gonna be the best, you gotta be willing to play the best. Uh, you can't, you can't dodge difficult challenges. You gotta aim high. That's what champions do. They aim high. All right. Number five, put it down. Champions improvise or adjust. Champions improvise or adjust. In other words, sometimes the plans you have. Don't always go your way. Sometimes a door will shut. Sometimes some people you depending on don't come through for you. Champions don't say, okay, I quit. I thought somebody was gonna come through for me. I thought a door was gonna open for me. Listen to me, if you're trying to be something, you're gonna be disappointed. People will let you down. People will discourage you. But look, you don't sit there and beg people to help you or beg people who don't wanna assist you or beg people who have proven to you that they're unreliable. You just make some adjustments. You ask God to open up another the door for you, you improvise and move in a different direction. That's the champion mentality. Six, champions never quit. Amen. They never quit. When we look at Hebrews, and we'll get back to that scripture in a minute, but it talks about all that Jesus had to endure on the cross, the shame of the cross, the indignity of the cross, uh, how he was mocked and ridiculed while he was on the cross, but he did not quit. Never quit. That's the mentality of a champion. Don't give up until you go up. That's the mentality of a champion. And number seven, champions don't back down from a challenge. You will have some challenges, but, but champions don't back down from a challenge. Listen, Jesus is called the champion and God is calling for us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and to become champions. How are you doing when it comes to the characteristics of a champion? Do you still dream? Are you fired up? Do you bounce back? Do you aim high? Do you improvise? I'm willing to improvise or just, do you quit? How do you do? Do you just keep on keeping on? Uh, do you say, well, it's a challenge. I quit. I'm going home. Or do you say, you know what? I'm going to face this challenge. And, hey, man, and I'm going to, I might, I might lose, but it's not because I didn't face the challenge. And you know what? If you face the challenge with faith, God will give you the victory. It's time to stop being a chump and it's time to be a champion in what God is calling for you to do. And this week, we're going to explore what that means. So you stick with this. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Uh, help us with the time we have to be champions, to, to have a champion mentality, to dream big dreams. Our life is not over. It's not over for us. If we, if we believe you and if we do what we can do, you will do what we can't do. You will make great things happen for us. Oh, God, may this be the beginning of a new day in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, everybody needs a church, church home. Champions don't do it by themselves. Champions have other people who are helping them. So I want you to contact us here at St. Stephen Church. Uh, email us, uh, newstart at Live. Org, we will get back with you. Again, thank you for being with me, and I hope that you have a blessed day the rest of the day. You champion you. And until we meet again, don't forget we're still in COVID-19, so don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is still in control. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.